Building a model steam plant using two engines. This is part one, planning the layout. Before starting on a steam plant, I always sit and look at it for quite a while and move the parts around until something clicks and it looks right. The customer has provided the baseboard and it's very nice indeed. This engine is a Cotswold Heritage Vulcan beam engine. And taking a close look at the engine, I must say I'm very impressed with the build quality. After sitting and staring at the layout of the steam plant for a while, I think it's time to give the engines a bit of a run just to make sure they don't need any attention before I fit them all in place. Before I go any further though, I'm going to oil both of these engines. The majority of steam engines use a total loss oil system, whether they be full size steam engines or small ones like these. In the video clip currently on screen, you can see that I'm putting oil into all the little oiling points on the engine. Wherever there's a moving part, it needs some oil. And that includes the slide valve and the piston and the cylinder. My compressed airline has an inline oiler built into the supply, but I always put a little bit of oil into the steam chest before I start. The first engine to run is the one on the left. This is a Cotswold Heritage Cyclops engine, and it is called a hypocycloidal steam engine. And here it is running in slow motion so you can see how it works. I really think I need one of these in my life. I can watch this for hours, it's a thing of great beauty. The other engine is pretty good too. This is a Cotswold Heritage Vulcan beam engine. And both of these engines run very well indeed. And the funny noise that you've just heard is me blowing into this thing. This is called a chuff pot. It's a very clever design and it's very well made. This chuff pot makes the exhaust note sound louder because it's a resonance chamber, but it also doubles as an exhaust condenser. This is the water tank, again beautifully made by the same person. As far as I can see by using Google, these items are built in Australia by a man called Jeff, who calls himself Oz Steam Demon. Apart from looking at the general layout of the plant, I have to think about the piping layout and of course the displacement lubricator position. This looks stupid stuck on the steam chest of the engine. There's nothing wrong with the displacement lubricators, they just look a bit ugly and overscale. So I'm going to think again about this. I'm removing the steam taps first. And why am I removing the steam taps? Well, I'm just going to see what they look like without them. And they look like this. In the centre at the front of the steam plant, I'm going to build a special steam turret incorporating a whistle and a valve to allow the connection of an airline for running the engines on compressed air. So at the moment, I'm looking at the feasibility of mounting these lubricators at each end of the turret. I'm not sure of the layout for these lubricators yet, but in my mind's eye, I can see it fairly clearly. More about that later on in the series. This is a small Cotswold Heritage boiler, and this has been in my workbench before because a while back, I built a steam plant for the same customer featuring a Stuart Twin Victoria and a Southworth horizontal duplex pump. And this was the boiler he sent along which was too small for that plant. So he ended up buying a Stuart Models HB6 boiler which was much larger. This well made small copper boiler will be perfect for this application. So the piping begins, starting with a PM Research 90 degree cast elbow. I'm a bit puzzled about these cast elbows from PM Research. I buy them from Forest Classics in the UK because it's quicker and more convenient. And on the Forest Classics website it says they are quarter by 40 threads per inch. But I've never found them to be so. What I always have to do is run a quarter by 40 tap down them to make them quarter by 40. But if you're doing this, don't over tighten them because otherwise this happens. And I didn't do this on purpose for the video. Yes, it was incompetence, not incontinence, incompetence. There is a subtle difference in the two words. Anyway, I've got loads more, so it's not a big problem. In this clip, you get a clear idea of what I'm trying to achieve. I need the steam pipe, the live steam pipe, to point downwards. And I generally try and do this when I'm building steam plants. It's not always possible, but it's better if the live steam pipe is low down on the board, then there's less chance of the operator touching it and getting burnt. 
although I will be wrapping it in string. And in the case of this plant, I can't say I'm looking forward to wrapping all of the live steam piping in string because it takes quite a while and it's quite tedious. You should get the general idea from this clip. We have the union that comes out of the boiler connected to the PM Research 90 degree elbow and another union connected into the other end of the elbow. This takes a union nut and union cone which will be silver soldered to a piece of copper pipe that will connect to the steam turret. I'm going to radically change the subject. On the bench at the moment, my second bench at the far end of the workshop, is this, a steamboat named Edith. Quite a lot of viewers have asked me, well what's happened to the steamboat named Edith project? Well it's alive and well, it's been on hold for a while because of the weather outside. This is a very old model steamboat and the hull is made out of pieces of metal cans soldered together. And what I need to do is glass fibre the inside of it to strengthen it. The problem is it's filthy in there so I need to take it outside and use a pressure washer to blast off all the grime and the loose paint. So don't worry, I always complete the projects that I start but periodically I have to pause them. And furthermore, the owner of this boat is of a great age so we won't be sailing this until at least August when the weather gets warmer. So there's no mad rush to get this job finished in February. The hull of this boat is 51 inches long, so I've had to clear another workbench to give me some more space in the workshop. The first thing I need to do before I start doing anything with this hull is to float it and see whether it leaks. Thankfully, a builder friend of mine gave me an old bath, and I've put that in the garden, so I can float the boat in that when we get some good weather when it's not snowing or raining or generally blowing a gale. There's a lot of work to do on this boat. I'm not going to make it cosmetically beautiful because the charm of it is the way it sits anyway. It needs a thorough clean. But I do need to construct a radio compartment. This tiller arm was retrofitted at some time in the past, but that's no good. The mechanism all needs to be inside the boat itself. Right then, back to the build of the steam plant. I think it's fair to mention because some people really don't get it. I do this commercially. I build plants like this not for the good of my health, I do it commercially, but some projects I do as a labour of love. And projects that I do as a labour of love, obviously I enjoy them, but they don't pay the bills. At this moment in time I have 305 Patreon supporters and I'm really grateful for that, it does make a difference, as do the donations that come in through the paypal.me account. Not forgetting the kind viewers who send me very good things in the post, and the viewers who pay for Blackgate's engineering gift vouchers. I won't mention any names, but you all know who you are, and I thank you very much indeed. But despite this, sadly, I've had to send one of my Ferraris back. And to finish on this subject, here is an interesting statistic. The other week, I made a video, and I put a Patreon advert on the video, almost exactly like the one on screen at the moment. And the day after, when I looked at the statistics on YouTube Analytics, I noticed from the previous day that the channel had 32,000 hits and I got four new Patreon subscribers. By clicking a few buttons, I could easily put all of my content onto Patreon, but I don't want to do that. The whole point of making these videos is to help people out, particularly beginners, to the fascinating hobby of steam engines. Model steam engines pretty much like these. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.